Hi everybody, it's Franny from Heidi and Franny's Garage and today is part three in our three-part series of doing a tune-up on a Porsche 356. So part one was doing the valves and two was the electrical tune-up. So this is going to be the tune-up of the carburetors themselves. So that's up next on Heidi and Franny's Garage. Tools and supplies we'll need. On the far right there are a couple of 9mm wrenches we can use to adjust the ball joints on the throttle linkage. Then above that is some grease that we can use to grease the linkage. Below the wrenches is a short stubby screwdriver we can use to adjust the idle. Now you can kind of do it by hand but this screwdriver makes it easy. Next to that is a 14mm long socket and ratchet that we're going to use to get the air cleaners off the carburetor. To the left of that is the driver's manual and they have a great write-up on how to set your carburetor. So it's really great reading. Then above the manual is something called a unisync which is a flow meter and we're going to use that when we sync the two carburetors. To the left of that are gloves which we'll need when we're cleaning the air filter elements on the air filter. I'll run you through the steps for today. So you really can't tune your carburetors until we get the engine good and warm. So step one is going to be to take the car out for a little tootle and warm it up first. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and clean our air cleaners. That's a pretty fast job. And then we'll get to tuning the actual carburetors. Now we've got a couple of adjustments on them. We've got idle adjustments and then we also have air bleeds on each one of the barrels of the carburetors. So we're going to throw a flow meter on this thing and find out where we are with all of that. We're going to check that flow at idle and then also at speed and we'll adjust our linkages appropriately if we need to adjust anything. And then when we're all done with all that, we'll go ahead and take the car back out for a little tootle and just to check our work. With our engine good and warm, our next step is going to be to pull our air cleaners and clean the elements out in that. So I'll show you how that's done. Now if you don't need to clean your elements, you really need the car good and warm so you can just skip this step and go right on to the tuning. My car has the original Connect uh, air filters on it and that's a 14 millimeter bolt on those. So I'll be using my 14 millimeter socket to take them off. Now from the factory, these air cleaners didn't have any type of element inside them at all. It, uh, some people call these things bird strainers because they're so coarse. And what I did, because I wasn't really happy with that and I was afraid there'd be, any, we have a lot of fine dust and grit in, in Colorado and I was really afraid it'd all get into the engine. So what I did was on the inside here, I put in a piece of this air cleaner foam, it's like K&N air cleaner foam, just cut it to size and then pushed it into the inside of this thing. Now there's zero chance it's actually going to fall out or come into the inside. It's actually in there pretty tight. So you can see though it's got some nice uh, schmutz in there. So it's doing its job which is great. So I'm going to go ahead and clean the elements on both of these air filters and we'll just set them aside because the last step is going to be to put them back on. But all of the testing and all of the tuning and stuff we're going to be doing, we'll need the air cleaners off for that. We've got the engine good and warm and it's running. 
Our first step is going to be to kind of kick the idle up just a tad. What we need is the engine to run smoothly and not drop in idle at all. Also, we need to disconnect our throttle linkages as well, so the throttle linkage isn't causing any fuss. We're gonna pop off our ball joints at the actual carburetor down at the bottom, and then you can just sort of flip them up and get them out, out of the way. That way we know that the throttle linkage isn't affecting the idle at all. We wanna set the idle up just a little bit on both sides. There we go, that's pretty good. You just want it to be a good steady idle, whatever that is. It's usually gonna be somewhere around maybe 1,000, 1,200 RPM, something like that. Yep, and looking at the tap, we're at 1,200 RPM. Now I'm gonna start by throwing my flow meter on. I wanna make sure both carburetors are roughly pulling the same. It's not critical at this point, but I just wanna make sure they're close enough. There we go, little ball is bouncing halfway on the middle mark there. This one's a little low, so we'll just run the idle up just a smidge. There we go. Back and double check our other one. Yep. Okay, so they're both roughly the same. That's a good place to start. The engine's running great. Now here's what we're gonna do. There's some air bleeds on the base of the outsides of the carburetor on each side. What we're gonna do is one, every cylinder, we're gonna go through all four of them. And what we want is we wanna be able to rotate that thing a, a quarter turn in each direction and not have, the, not have the idle change at all. The RPM shouldn't drop. If they do drop, go back the direction you're going, then go another quarter turn in that same direction. Because what you're looking for, it's kind of a, a bit of a peak here. And so across this peak is about, what are these, so it's about a half turn-ish on the top flat part of that peak, and you're shooting for the center of that peak. Okay, I'm gonna start with the cylinder in the far left back here, just because that's where I am. It doesn't really matter what order you do that in. So that's cylinder number three for me, but it doesn't really matter. And just kind of reach around and you kind of use the braille method really i'm going to close it a quarter turn then i'm going to put it back to center then i'm going to open it a quarter turn so here we go there's a quarter turn closed and the idle sounds like it's falling just a tad we'll open it up another quarter turn the idle came back up we'll open it a quarter turn more and no change at all. Okay, so now we'll continue a quarter turn. And we can hear it sort of ever so slightly falling off. So now I know that I'm going to rotate that back a quarter turn and leave it there. Okay, great. That's cylinder number three. We'll move to cylinder number four. Do the same thing. I'm going to go a quarter turn uh, tightened then back to where it was, and then a quarter turned open. There's my quarter turn tight, my quarter turn open, and a quarter turn more open. And I'm hearing it fall a little bit. So I'll go back to where I was, quarter turn, comes back up ever so slightly, quarter turn closed, and now another quarter turn close. And noticing not much change. So I'm only going to open up another quarter turn. So that leaves number four at one quarter turn closed, further closed than it was before I started. And so we just do the same for the other side. Now, if you're starting from ground zero, what you want to do is tighten those things all the way. Now, don't cram down on them. Just tighten them all the way, though, until they seat, and then back it off a turn and a quarter, and that's your starting point. All right, so let's do cylinder number one. Same thing, we're gonna tighten a quarter, then we're gonna go back to neutral, and then we'll open it a quarter. So here we go, tighten it a quarter.
Definitely the idle's dropping. Open it up a quarter again. Came back up. Open it up a quarter. No change. We're going to continue one more quarter. And no real change. So now I know that this one needed to be opened a quarter turn. Leave it back there. Great. That's cylinder number one. Our last one we're gonna do is the, the far right here, which is cylinder number two. Same deal. Quarter tight. You can kinda hear it slowing down. Quarter open. Came back up. Quarter open. No chain. Quarter open again. No real change. We're going back to a quarter where we were. So we're, this one's going to be a quarter open as well. So at this point, the engine's been sort of idling quite a bit. So let's go ahead and uh, give it a little goose just to kind of clear it out a little bit. And we're going to go through this process again. Okay, great. So we're going to go through the whole process again and just verify that we are on the top of our peaks, right in the center. Quarter this way, quarter this way, no change. Right in the center. Back to the center. This one's good. That's number three. We'll do number four. Quarter closed. So we're going to back that off a little bit. Okay. So that one we did end up closing a little more the second time around. Let's try the right side. There we go, quarter closed. That one's right on the money. We're gonna leave that right where it was. And then uh, number two. Okay, so the right side feels solid to me. So the only one I had to adjust again was one, two, three, number four. So let's do number four again, just to be super solid. We are where we need to be. Okay, I think we can leave it just a little bit closed from where it was. This is a bit of an iterative process. So I'll get the car to where I'm pretty certain it's okay. Then I'll go ahead and drive around the neighborhood a bit and I'll just reach back here and continue to do this two or three times, get the car hot again. Like if I go to an event or something and I'm not super solid on how this thing's running, I'll go ahead and pop the deck lid and take a look at those adjustments again. Once you get them set, they're pretty solid. They pretty much stay where they need to be. But it can, they can be a little fiddly getting them where they need to be. Okay, well the engine sounds like it's idling nice. I don't hear any popping or any lean misses or anything. Sounds pretty good. So let's go ahead and throw our flow meter on and see where we are. We're going to have to set the idle on this. The, the manual says 600 to 800, I think and I would be closer to that 800. 600 sounds awfully low to me. So we're gonna, we're gonna shoot for about eight to 900, I think. That's just my preference. It's where I like it to be. So first off, we're gonna go ahead and check our flows on each side. There we go, we're back where we were. The little, the little uh, red ball is right in the middle where it should be, the side. Okay, we're good and balanced, but our idle is pretty high. Looking at the tachometer, we're at about almost 1400 RPM, so we're way high. So let's go ahead and run this down. We're gonna use our flow meter to make sure that we get it down the same for both carburetors. So all I'm doing is I'm running the idle stop down. We're done messing with the air bleeds on the sides. Okay, that sounds a little more normal. Let's see, we're, believe it or not, that's 1,000. Let's see how close we are on the, on the flows. Okay, a little bit below, and the right one's a little low, but we're still a little high on our idle. So we'll go ahead and lower the left one just a smidge. There we go. See if we can get them to be the same. Okay, about, it's, it's about halfway. And about halfway on this one as well. A little bit lower. 
it seems to me like it's a little fussy, to be honest. Idle-wise, we're right around 900. And to be honest, this one's a little, we'll probably take that down just a smidge. No, it's just about right. See, that just seems too low to me. And it seems a little, like it's not quite happy down that low. So I'm not gonna go any lower than that. This is so iterative, back and forth, back and forth. Go up at the top, close to the top. So I'm gonna take this down just a smidge. Okay, I think that sounds pretty good. To me, that's a, it's a little bit quick in the idle, but I kind of like that. It's going to respond better off the idle, I think. And uh, we're nice and balanced. Okay, so our next step is going to be to rehook the uh, throttle linkage back up and recheck our flow. We want to make sure that the throttle linkage isn't pushing down on one of the carburetors, one of the other carburetors. We kind of give it a little bit of, a little bit of that. Okay, that'll take the slop out of everything. We'll go ahead and double check our flow again. Looks good on that side. Looks good on that side. So that's great. So I think we look good on this. Now, when you do use one of these, the uh, snail-shaped ones fit sort of inside, but on these carburetors, there's a bar that goes right across very close to the top. So these flat-sitting uh, meters actually work a lot better, I think. The other ones just won't sit in there and seal well. But you have to be careful. It'll kind of vibrate a little bit and could move off a little bit and expose some air. Also, they're adjustable here. So you can, you can adjust uh, this, because right now we're at idle. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna kick the idle up a bit and make sure that while the uh, throttle linkage is engaging the engines that we're still balanced left to right. And if not, then we'll have to adjust our, our throttle linkage. But you can use this little ring inside here and you can use it to adjust the flow to get, because otherwise the ball will be all the way up the top. You can open this guy up to, to lower the ball back down. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. I'm really happy with that. The engine sounds like it's running well. I'm going to use that fancy dancy uh, throttle hold on the dash. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out and turn it off. And that's going to give us a, a bit higher RPM. And we'll go ahead and test the linkage with, with the engine going a little bit faster. Now we have our engine going at about 2,500 RPM. And the carburetors are being pushed down by the throttle linkage. That's very important. We're taking the slop out of the whole system. Now let's go ahead and check with our flow meter and make sure the carburetors are still balanced. Okay, it's just below the top black mark. And the right one is pegged, so that's not good. That means that our throttle linkage is a little bit out of adjustment. Okay, well, I'll show you how to fix that. That's our two 9mm wrenches for that. Well, it's pretty simple. There's a 9mm uh, catch nut or a lock nut at the top. We're going to loosen the catch nut. And then the rod itself has right-hand threads on one side and left on the other. So we can rotate it to either close it or expand it. So in this case, the right side is running too fast. So what we want to do is we want to expand that. We want to close that rod down just a tad. So that's what we're gonna do.
Okay, with our catch nuts loose, we're gonna use our airflow meter to set that carburetor to be exactly the same as the other side. So it looks like we need to be right below the top black mark. There we go. See how we can rotate? We can rotate that up and down. Alright, I think we've got it. It's just below the black mark up there. That, that feels pretty good. Okay, now that we've got it where we need it to be, we go ahead and lock off our 9 millimeters, and then we're going to go back and double check it. It's awfully fiddly. That's it, they look great. We're gonna check our idle again really quick just to be certain we're still on the money for everything. Yep, looks great. Okay, so that's awesome. Now while we have it balanced at idle and at speed. So our right linkage was a little off and we had to adjust a few of our little air bleeds. But that's pretty much it. Once you have that done, go ahead and take the car out for a little tootle. And just, if you need to go back and hit those air bleeds a little bit, go ahead and do that. With our carburetors balanced and the air bleeds all set the way we want them, next step is going to be to go ahead and put the air cleaners back on. Now, one important thing I wanna note about the air cleaners is you don't want them to sit all the way down. They should be up just about a millimeter or so because if they loosen up, over time they can wobble and walk around a little bit, woggle around in there, and they'll actually start cutting into the top of the metal um, on some of these uh, little bosses and things that are right below this, this uh, large opening. So when you set your air cleaners, make sure they're just up about a millimeter. So what I do is get them sort of a little bit cinched up and then when they feel like they're just starting to tighten down a little bit, then I go ahead and raise it just a little bit. These don't have to be super tight, just tight enough to keep them from wobbling around. I'm way choked up on this. All right, that feels good. The other one in. So I want to note that I did clean out my element inside here and then I just oiled it a little bit with a little bit of engine oil and then squeezed it out. That's kind of what you do with these uh, open cell foam and seems to work pretty well. Now they will sort of precipitate out a little bit of oil or drain out a little or whatever, ooze out a little oil onto the top of the carburetor. Not the end of the world and you just wipe it up. And it's probably not all that bad for some of the mechanisms inside the carburetor as well to have a little bit of oil in them. Our new fuels are just, they're really designed for fuel injection and not for carburetors. So they don't have any real lubricants in them. Just don't want these too tight. Sort of feel them, make sure they just don't wobble. Okay, well that's it. Our carburetors are balanced, they're adjusted, everything feels great in here. So we should expect the car to start and run and do everything really, really well. Now, after you've done, like I said, after you've done a process like this, don't be afraid to, when you get somewhere, to get out, pop the boot, get underneath there, and just sort of rotate those guys a quarter turn each way. You're looking for that, remember you were looking for that flat bit on the top, so that a quarter either way doesn't make any difference at all. That's the idea at least. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this third installment in our three-part series on doing a tune-up on a Porsche 356. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. If you've got any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them. Thank you so, so much for watching. And until next time, safe travels. Bye.